In last week of Halo, we had some amazing news of Halo Waypoint's massive update. The MCC gained some 20th anniversary content for the next two months. A new Twitch Rivals event along with a really extensive vlog update and an absolutely mountain load of Halo Infinite news. Talking gameplay, marketing, and did IGN leak out the early access? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody and welcome to Last Week in Halo, the show that keeps you updated with everything that happened last week in Halo. I know not everyone can keep up with the news as soon as it happens, so this show is kind of a Monday morning thing where we get to catch up with all the greatness that happened within Halo. So if you guys like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button, let me know you want to see some more content like this, and it greatly helps out the channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, as soon as the news happens, make sure you tap subscribe. So uh, let's get right into the content here. So first, let's cover some of the general Halo news that happened last week. We had the first episode of a incredibly insightful podcast from our former community manager, Bravo, who sits down for an interview with Max Hoberman about the development of Halo 2. I listened to the first episode and guys, it's really insightful stuff. And when I realized that their plan was to only ship that and to not ship the sort of Halo 1 multiplayer that everyone knew and loved and had taken off in the LAN party setting, um, I just thought that was a huge mistake. This is Max Hoberman. I'm the uh, CEO founder of Certain Affinity. And prior to that, I was uh, working at Bungie. I was the multiplayer online and user interface design lead. So go check that out on any of your preferred platforms when it comes to podcasts. Next in massive Halo news, to be honest, guys, is the complete overhaul of Halo Waypoint. This is a huge update to get the website ready for Halo Infinite, guys. And it's a huge, huge, huge update. It actually came with a blog update as well for this whole thing, detailing all the little interesting things about the new parts of Halo Waypoint as well, guys. I definitely want to say you guys got to go check this out. There's some really interesting things about like statistics, customization, how you can keep track of your battle pass, achievements and things like that on the website. So if you haven't gone to Halo Waypoint in a while, Go ahead and do so because you're going to be using it a lot with Halo Infinite's release. Remember how last week we had like this cool needler kind of thing? Well, now we have a Mega Constructs needler thing right here where you can actually construct and put together. You have a nice little platform for your bookshelf right there to show off your Halo fandom. And yeah, it's a pretty sweet looking needler. If you guys are really into this kind of stuff, there you go. Now I'm sure you guys have seen these people all over YouTube, Dr. Squash. They actually just came out with a Halo version of their now YouTube famous soap. And guys, if you're into Halo and you need to showcase your scrubbiness and you need to clean up, well, there's your chance to become a clean Halo boy and to a no scope God. And the last bit of interesting Halo news guys is that Halo 4 turned nine years old last week. Now I know Halo 4 isn't very well received throughout the entirety of the community, but it did some things right, especially around the campaign side of things. I think that the story that was told within Halo 4's campaign is a rather good one. Uh, the multiplayer though, certainly left a lot to be desired. It just felt like it wasn't just quite where it needed to be to be a true Halo experience. Uh, we do know that it was a bit rushed as well as Microsoft wanted that game out in 2012 when 343 wanted to wait a year and release it as like a launch day title for the new Xbox. They probably take advantage of that new hardware and stuff like that, but sadly that didn't come out to be the way. Xbox was under different management at that time. I think now current management would probably allow that to happen. Now I will say that Halo 4 was probably my least played out of all the Halo games, mainly due to the multiplayer not being that great but hey the events that happened in halo 4 for the campaign led to the events of halo 5 which then led to the events now in halo infinite so it's still part of the story it's still something to take into consideration when it comes to just the lore of halo just overall it's not something to be completely forgotten it happened it did some things well did some things not so well but overall it's still like actually a pretty decent game the master chief collection is now gaining content for the next two months guys celebrating 20 years of xbox and halo with this month being the 20th anniversary of the franchise and also the console as well. Day for 3 has decided to kind of collaborate and make some interesting little bits of customization coming for you guys. If you haven't seen the update that came out on November 3rd, add in a bunch of new customization like this grunt plushie, which people are obsessing for over online and some new nameplates added in like this awesome clippy nameplate. I mean, like, come on, who would want not want that clippy representing them in game? And here is the really cool stuff. This is the new set of customization 
coming for the next two months within the exchange of MCC. We already had the Orion armor set come out, guys. We had a whole video talking about this as well. It is the original, I mean, original pre-release armor set of Master Chief. It's in Halo 2 Anniversary. I put it on, it looks fantastic. Then on November 10th this week, we have the Duke shoulders as well as the original Xbox backpack, which come on, that's pretty freaking awesome. Then on the 17th, you have the AR. That's all original Xbox coded out right there. Then we have the Mirage armor, which is some more extended lore armor that has never made it into Halo. You get to have that. Then on December 1st, you have the OGX VR skin, which looks absolutely amazing, along with a Halo 3 themed backpack, like an actual backpack. <laughs> then on December 8th, we'll actually get some Halo Reach customization with a new little side holster container right here. December 15th, we'll see the Halo 3 shoulder controller, the sniper rifle skin, as well as a Halo 3 backpack. December 22nd, we'll see the grunt plushie come in, along with the original Xbox backpack kind of look as well. Then on December 29th, we'll have the rocket launcher and shotgun skins, and then coming in full circle on January 5th with the Orion armor set. There were some minor bug fixes that came along with this November 3rd update, but just kind of really minor things, nothing too crazy. And to accompany these new armor sets coming into the Halo games, we have a cannon fodder talking about, well, this new armor sets right here, which kind of just adds some more context to the new armor sets coming in as well. Uh, so just really kind of better understanding of how deep the lore is with these armor sets as well, uh, especially with this SPI armor set right here, which actually was featured on a cover of a original Halo book, one of the original three. So if you are a lore boy like myself and like to read through these kind of things, it's very interesting stuff to kind of get a little, get a little bit better backstory when it comes to all this awesome customization coming in to MCC. Now I do wish that some of this customization kind of came in before all of Halo Infinite's release on December 8th guys because honestly like when December 8th rolls around I don't really see myself coming back to MCC. I'm gonna be playing so much Halo Infinite guys it's gonna be crazy. I'm actually taking the full week off of work to just grind content, do live streams just every day. Halo Infinite's gonna be life changing for so many people and I'm just excited just to jump in and play this game so much. Next we have some information about HCS and what their expectations are of players, how to get your name out there and also expectations from viewers as well. And it looks like this Twitch Rivals event is gonna be pretty interesting with Ninja coming back to Halo. So let's jump right into this HCS blog. It does a nice little job of detailing different experiences and how to basically become pro within Halo's ecosystem as every different kind of community requires different things from their players and from their fans as well. And then this blog update details just that about what they're kind of expecting out of viewers and what they expect out of players as well as if you want to go pro in Halo, which there's gonna be plenty of people who have this aspiration, how to really go about doing it. And I detailed this in a previous video as well if you want to go into all the little details about it. But essentially, if you want to try to go pro, just make sure you're like a good representation of the community. Put your best foot forward, create content out there, live stream, make videos and things like that just to get your name out there. There's no better time than right now to get noticed within the Halo competitive community to take part and hopefully go pro and to get a team together or an organization to recognize you. And also from the spectator side of things, not only just watching, which is obviously the biggest thing you possibly can do, but also talking about it, making videos on it, tweeting it out and things like that. Getting competitive Halo out there within the sphere of the discussions of Halo just so then people get to know that hey this awesome side of Halo is out there if you want to check it out. Next bit of news here guys is that we have a Twitch Rivals event happening on November 13th with the host of Ninja himself coming back to Halo. Last time he actually donated a huge amount of money just kind of up the ante for the prize pool for this Halo event that we had last time but again this can be another Halo 3 throwback experience right here and we've seen some people announce that they're actually taking part of this. We see legendary Halo Pro Roy jumping in on the fun for this. Halo streamer Hunter JJX will be taking part of this as well. Now, assuming Roy's twin brother Lunchbox tweeted this out recently as well, which is either him confirming that he's signed to an organization or he's also taking part of this Twitch Rivals event. If he is, I'll definitely make sure to let you guys know on this channel for all the competitive Halo news. 
Okay, let's get to the juicy details here, guys. Halo Infinite news that we'd had. It was a big week for Halo. We had the marketing for Halo Infinite being kicked off right here as well. We had the reveal of a new map with some gameplay, which was kind of questionable on that. The reveal of the collector's edition for Halo Infinite. And it looks like maybe IGN might have early leaked out the early access for Halo Infinite, if it actually is happening. We'll do some theory crafting on this for this video, guys. So let's just jump right into this. So let's talk about this theory crafting for early access reveal for Halo Infinite. This does seem like it could possibly happen as the Twitter of Halo.API, who's done some great information on just Halo apps and also someone leaks when they're doing their work, uh, came across this saying early access digital bundle for Halo Infinite's multiplayer right here. This was on the Xbox website as well. And Halo.API is a rather credible source. Uh, they they wouldn't want to create some clickbaity troll images just to get people excited and get themselves clicks. Uh, they have a pretty good reputation within the community here. So when they post this, I actually believe it. And I think IGN might have leaked it out a little bit because when IGN created their article talking about the battle pass, uh, well, they also said that Halo Infinite comes out December 5th, which is not accurate. It comes out December 8th, but this could possibly be the early access date for Halo Infinite. For this IGM article was released on November 5th, so they could have just thought five. This is why it's called theory crafting and not actual sources. Also, December 5th falls on a Sunday, which would be kind of odd to have early access happen on the weekend. Usually it would be like on a Friday or a Monday, possibly. But the reason why I bring this up is because Forza Horizon 5 is doing just that right now, and it's an Xbox Game Pass xbox studio game right there and they're doing like a really weird like tiered early access kind of thing which we could totally see something very similar when halo Infinite's release date comes very close guys within a month i'll keep an ear on the ground for this news and information guys if we do get some true early access for halo infinite you guarantee i'll let you guys know on this channel next we had an ign first of the map streets within halo infinite this is our first time looking at a new map since the flights guys and this map is a really kind of small 4v4 kind of styled map right here gonna be super crazy super hectic uh but ign did not do the best job of showcasing the map uh it's kind of roasted pretty bad on youtube when it comes to the uh, the gameplay here because you could definitely tell that the people who are playing this or at least the person that was recording their point of view um isn't exactly much of a veteran halo player to say the least right there ign released a gameplay of oddball as well as strongholds on here talking about the map with also with a developer walkthrough as well they also don't go too much detail about the map they just kind of say that this map is specifically designed for like slayer and also for like strongholds and also oddball as you can see here uh, this will be a competitive map as well with an asymmetrical competitive map it's kind of eh, kind of iffy to think about when it comes to this stuff but again guys as soon as we get some more information on that we'll definitely share it on the channel here oh and a 343 dev had an amazing subtweet about this saying are you a new or lapsed shooter player who's looking to up their skills for halo infinite that's why we're building the academy to provide maps modes and bots to help you become a super soldier in no time Oh my God, the roast. IGN also revealed the battle pass for Halo Infinite as well. We do have a video detailing the entire thing. If you guys want to check that out, video is on the channel here. In this blog update, it reveals that the battle pass will cost $10. They also mentioned about every quarter of the battle pass will receive a legendary rated cosmetic. So they're not keeping all the good stuff at the end. We already knew this, but the first season will be Heroes of Reach, so Halo Reach themed battle pass. Here's a preview of the 100 plus rewards that are gonna be within the battle pass as well we have noble six armor set carter's armor set june's cat and george's armor set with along with like the master chief helmet from halo Infinite, which looks cool but the really interesting thing are like the fire shoulder pads the death animations what they mentioned in here we also have recon helmet coming back we also just have fire whatever fire is for guys let me know in the comment section down below like and we do have a video talking about this more in detail we have emile's armor set jumped in there and it looks like the superintendent from odst is going to be an ai and hopefully joseph stain voices this as well i mean staten works at 343 now so uh that totally is a possibility they also confirmed within this blog update that emotes will not be coming in halo infinite at least at first they stated that they tried it out but it just didn't really fit the theme of halo for the most part and so they were kind of just staying away from doing any kind of like dance emotes or things like that but of course then they said like well if you guys really want it we could do it again if you want to know the details of all the things about the battle pass check out the channel here guys for our battle pass breakdown video 
Next we have the marketing for Halo Infinite. It started up this week, guys. The first trailer that we have was Unspoken. And in this trailer, it has a nice little kind of sign language type of discussion about how they were able to find like this material and resources for the upgrade, the shielding for Master Chief's armor set and things like that. A really cool story to kind of get a little back lore behind the whole thing. I definitely want to check it out. It's very heartfelt. I felt this one, it was a hard way to start the week, but it definitely started to hit my emotions pretty hard on this one. Next, we had a trailer that happened Saturday morning about the grapple shot in a similar kind of style as well, but this one was more just kind of like a very intimate story of one person's success. This is actually kind of interesting as this was set in the time frame before the events of Halo Reach and Combat Evolved. Essentially shows this engineer who's working just tirelessly to put together this grapple shot. It's a really interesting watch as well. Again, kind of pulls on your emotions because once they succeed it, then you're like, yes, you did it. Fantastic. Now I'm sure we'll be seeing more of these marketing videos throughout the weeks as well, guys. So stay tuned to the channel whenever that stuff does go live. I'll either post a video or on my community page, depending on how interesting the video is. Next, we had the reveal of the Halo Infinite Collector's Edition for Microsoft from Xbox Series X and Xbox One here, guys, it's available for. And it just has a cool collection of some art, has some lanyards, stickers, badges, and all that stuff. It even has a plasma pistol, ball opener, as well as a energy sword lamp. As you could probably assume, this thing sold out super quick. Now, this is the Collector's Edition, not the Legendary Edition. We don't know if there will be a Legendary Edition for Halo Infinite, but there, there will be. I guarantee I'll let you guys know on the channel here. Next, Duracell is actually doing a bit of a getaway kind of thing for Halo Infinite as well. Where basically, if you go on the Twitter saying tweet at Duracell with the hashtag right there, you'll be able to be added into a sweepstakes where it gives you a chance to be flown to Palm Springs to play Halo Infinite. So kind of like a pampering the player kind of thing. Uh, is if this is something you want to do, it's out there for you. This also ends on November 10th, guys. So if you really want to do it, do it now. Now, what you're looking at here is me doing some uh, trending research here, guys. And if you can see right here, I have a color coded out with Halo Infinite, Vanguard, and Battlefield 2042. This is how many people are searching on Google for these terms. This is right before the release of Call of Duty Vanguard, that Halo Infinite is taking the US by storm. Now, obviously, it's not incredibly important for Halo to be trending on Google for it to be a good game or have it be popular or played enough. But the thing is, just to seeing this much interest in Halo throughout the general gaming public when it comes to search terms, you can kind of tell is super reassuring that Halo Infinite is going to be something very special for us guys on December 8th. The community is there. The interest is there. They just need to make a good game from what we've played so far. It plays out very well, so I'm very excited about what the future of Halo has for us. And that's everything that happened in last week of Halo. If you guys have missed any content from me recently or want to stay update with everything happening with Halo, check out this playlist right here for all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.